So, my last video on recording transparency in OBS? Yeah, it, it kind of blew up, and so did the comments. You all had plenty to say. Giant file sizes, choppy playback, and some confusion in OBS. So let's fix everything today in one video. And in that first video, I showed you how to record transparency using PNG inside a move file. And in the comments, I mentioned using ProRes 4444 for a slightly smaller file size. Still great quality, and uh, the huge file still remained. But yeah, that's in the past. We're going to today show you how to save 95% of that size using Google's WebM. WebM may seem familiar, and that's most likely because it's used for Stinger transitions. And it has exactly what we need in this case as well, compression and transparency. If this already sounds like it's going to save you a ton of storage space, hit like, subscribe, and share this with a friend. I'm working toward YouTube partner and your support means the world. So let's get back into it and go over a few things. Some online reports say that they've had some jittery editing or issues with the audio, but in my testing, I've only had scrubbing issues when I loaded a multi-hour file. The smaller ones work perfectly fine. And while Google's WebM format is free and open source, adoption by video editing programs is lacking, especially with transparency. But with that out of the way, let's compare the file size versus the time of recording. I've already said that one minute with my old method takes 2.13 gigabytes of space. This same minute within WebM is only 102 megabytes. It would take me recording this new way for about 22 minutes before I hit that same file size. As you can tell, the popular editors do not support importing WebM files. So I look for workarounds and let's get into what I found. For Adobe Premiere, the first option I found was FNord a free plugin that got my hopes up, but it doesn't support alpha and it only works with NVIDIA graphics cards. So if you're just recording and do not care about alpha, I actually highly recommend this. And the next option I found for this is called Influx from Autochroma. It's kind of free. Uh, the demo does let you import up to three minutes and 10 seconds of video. And that actually works for my recording style. But to remove that restriction, it's going to cost you $89 USD. And that sounds steep, but if you weigh it against the cost of maybe multiple hard drives, if you hoard all your old videos like I do, it's probably a bargain. For editors like DaVinci, Filmora, Final Cut, and CapCut, WebM files don't import cleanly with transparency. That doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means your workflow is going to change. The simple path is to record in WebM to save on space and then convert only the clips that you're actually planning to edit. This way you can avoid huge file sizes from hours of footage that you may never touch. And there are two basic approaches. Full file conversion. Take that entire WebM and convert it into a move file with ProRes 4444 so that transparency is preserved. Or you can do selective conversion. Use a tool to cut out just the section of the WebM that you want and then convert that smaller piece to a movie with transparency. This is great for long recordings where you only need to grab a highlight, such as streaming. The easiest tool for this is Shutter Encoder, which is actually completely free. The only thing you have to do is drag your WebM files in, set the function to Apple ProRes, change the option to 44, 44, and hit convert. It's done, and it can do multiple files. And if you would prefer a command line tool, FFmpeg does the same thing. And don't worry, all of what you see is going to be in the video's description, so you don't need to remember it or try to type it. But in short, record small, archive small, only expand to ProRes when you need to edit it. This makes WebM a space saver, not a space eater. In my last video, I recommended a portable install for keeping your recording and your streaming settings separate. But commenters pointed out that you could also just make a separate profile in OBS to do the exact same thing. And yeah, I tested it, 100% valid. But let me quickly go over the pros and cons of all the potential methods here. That profile setup, quick and easy, super simple. But it takes some time to switch between the two profiles, especially if you've got a very robust stream setup. 
And another drawback is it keeps every plugin that you've got installed at the ready. That built-in profile that we used last time, that dash P or dash dash portable, it does take a few extra steps to set up initially, but it does let you have a separate shortcut to click on so there's no switching back and forth. However, it does also still keep all of those installed plugins that could possibly cause some troubles. And there's finally a separate portable. It does have more setup, but it also comes with more benefits. You can install whatever plugins you need just for recording, such as Spout 2, and you can rule out that any of the others would potentially cause you problems because they're not installed. And I say this because I helped one of the viewers of my previous video with their setup via Discord screen share. And after hours of troubleshooting, we found out that there was a plugin preventing the settings from taking hold. Sure, they showed, but when we looked at the file, it was recording in a completely different method. Redoing OBS fixed the whole thing. In OBS, in the bottom right, click the word setting, not the gear. Go to output on the left, click recording tab at the top, and in here, switch the output to advanced if it isn't that way already. And the type, of course, should be custom output FFmpeg. Now, change that container format to be WebM, and it's gonna change a few other things, and that's absolutely fine. Now, in the video encoder settings, you'll need to paste all of this in, and don't worry, it's in the video description for you to copy. And you'll probably want to use this as a baseline to test with and make sure that this will work on your computer. And if not, I'll show you how to make some adjustments so it's either better quality or is easier on your computer. The simplified knobs that you need to worry about, and there's only three of them, CRF is your quality knob. The lower the number, the sharper it's going to be, but you're going to have bigger files. The higher the number, the smaller it's going to be, it's going to be grainier and it's going to be more compressed. The CPU dash used, which is your speed switch, lower the number is better detail, more CPU usage, higher equals it's easier on your PC, but it's going to get less detail. The last one is the threading, and this is a couple settings. This is row dash MT and tile dash columns. This lets your CPU split up the work, and if OBS is crashing on you, set them both to zero. A quick recap. WebM means smaller file sizes, so it removes the headache of those giant files and all the hard drives you had to have with the previous method. But this new way comes with headaches of its own from how unsupported video editors are with this format. And here's how I'm planning to use this new method and what I learned from your comments on my last video. I'm moving to a completely external copy of OBS Portable so I can have more control over the quality and stability of what I'm producing. I'll be using the profile system inside of this OBS to change the way I record. So I can use the old method, I can use this new method, I can even have a horizontal and vertical variations on all of these. And that's something I learned from a new friend, ID10, who made a very similar video on this transparency recording topic. And I do highly recommend you go check him out. Link is on the screen somewhere, and I'm gonna put it in the description as well. Oh, and before I go, I almost forgot to fix one other thing for you. The jittery playback that some of you had, it's just installing Codex, which I highly recommend the K-Lite Mega Pack. Of course, that's the one I use, but if you don't want the MPC media player, just uncheck that during install and everything will be fine after that. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you out. Drop a comment if you've got questions or if you've got some information to share. Hit like and subscribe to let me know that my efforts are paying off as I push towards YouTube Partner. And until next time, stay foxy and I will see you on the Foxhole Discord.